Hey guys, and welcome back to some more Factorio, sending supporters to space. And I am yet again very excited because we are making fantastic progress. I streamed earlier today for about three and a half, four hours, and uh, got actually more done than I actually thought I would get done. Uh, so a quick recap of that, and really quick, if you do want to see what happened there, you can go to my Twitch channel, which is always linked in the description of the videos, and check out the VOD for that uh, if you want to see what I did there. I may upload it because... It was um, pretty uh, event-filled, but anyway, what we did is we tied in this copper outpost way down here with a bit of a wonky stacker. <laughs> Stacker's okay, it's this engineering line that's a bit wonky, but he's gone and he ties into the copper smelter, which is uh, one of these is on. Uh, we have radar here, but he's not powered on. So he's on, he ties into this main line up here, which I've now moved like three times, and goes over here to the make everything. Uh, as you can see here, I've also tied in stone uh, from this outpost over here. It's a bit of a wonky crossing here, but you know, whatever. I think it's it's temp it's very very temporary. And then we also have uh, oil stuff being delivered, which goes into this station. This is actually supposed to be an engineering train station, which uh, it will be once I actually get uh, things delivered here properly. But temporarily, it's for oil products, uh, plastic, sulfuric acid, and uh, lube. So this guy is pretty much going. He has everything he needs, iron, copper. He makes reds, he makes greens. He doesn't make blues, but I don't really need anything with blues. And there's still 1.6K in there, which is kind of a good indication of that fact. Um, he's making robots and stuff. And I've also, uh, Flixian came on and helped me landfill this. <laughs> you can actually see where the lake used to be. Pretty much this entire light area is what got landfilled before we ran out. Uh, and we also, I built the assembler and uh, mining drill things. I moved them a bunch of times, hence why I didn't actually show building them. It was literally like moving them four tiles one direction or one tile another direction about 10 times in a row to get it right. Um, but they are built. They're not on because we don't need these yet. I'm not going to add robots or anything. I'm not going to even power them. The only reason I even built these right now is to get the spacing for the green circuits above them. Uh, this is like actually one of the last things I'm going to turn on. Uh, but I needed them for the spacing. So these go here. They're spaced out this far apart. Uh, I know this is very far apart, but the reason is so that a 363 chain can fit in here uh, because we don't want him blocking the junction. So I'm going to very quickly walk through these rails because they are a bit convoluted here. Um, so this guy has, uh, what would this be? This is iron or oh, iron plate um, is delivered here. Um, iron plate is delivered into here. I think doesn't really matter. I mean, these state it doesn't really matter. Um, is delivered into here, and uh, so again, these are if you recall, these are dedicated directional lines. So this is uh, input line, this is output line. You can see via the signals here, and each one of these sets goes to a different smelter. So this set here, it's really very difficult to follow actually. Uh, if we follow him, let's just keep our mouse steady here. So he goes down to like this smelter here, ish, <laughs> uh, uh, or maybe the one below it. And then uh, the one, the line up here is another iron line. And this one goes to another smelter. Uh, this is actually our top line. So if we follow him through, comes down and goes to, yeah, this next smelter, which isn't on, but um, that's what ties in. So what we have here is these, Drills take a lot more iron since we're producing double the amount, again, because they're needed for a pack that does not produce two per cycle. So this actually gets uh, one and a half lines, essentially. He gets his own dedicated smelter right here, right? This line uh, turns off here and does not continue. And then he also pulls from this line. Uh, so he gets kind of like the other half of the smelter that feeds the assemblers, because you can see this line does continue on through here. Uh, so this will actually have several trains going to that smelter, and hopefully they'll balance themselves out. Uh, and then this last line here, which turns off up and turns off over here, is the gear line, uh, which is split as well. Uh, now the signaling, uh, Hopo came in and helped me a little bit with this because, as you know, I am not super great with signaling yet. I was having a few issues with this, but this should theoretically be signaled. There may be a few missing. This is quite... Uh, quite crazy signaling in here. Um, I'm just kind of trying to show, so you know, pretty... Standard is just a lot of it. Um, so we have, you know, chain before a crossing, chain before a crossing, 
um, and then normal signal after. I'm not sure we actually need a double signal here. I'm not quite sure on that. Um, but again, not sure we need double here, but we have a chain before crossing, before cross, before cross, and then a normal before emerge. Um, same with, you know, the horizontal lines, same concept applies. Um, now this is a lot of crossings. The problem, the thing is, there's not much way to avoid this. Um, now, while these do need a train like every minute or less, you do have to consider it's only two builds, right? So even though they do need a train every minute or less, um, it's not like there's 20 trains running on here, right? It's just a couple trains, is it? Um, so, I mean, there will be crossings and stuff, but I don't think it will really hurt throughput that much. And that's why we left this space between the two builds, because if, say, an iron train comes through here, you know, if we put them closer together, we don't want him stopping, like, right here and then blocking all these lines trying to cross. So if he comes through and pulls into here, and waits, he's not going to be blocking any of the inputs for this one. Uh, and then also, the reason there's no stackers or anything is because these lines are the stackers, and this is a huge benefit to having dedicated uh, single directional lines like this, is this line coming from here, right? So this is the iron smelter. This is, I know these are very hard to follow. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing myself in it as well. Uh, so this is one of these. Um, this is like this one actually sure where the hell does this one go that was actually the other one um this is extremely confusing i will tell you that much so this is actually the one can that continues so like this smelter here right this uh, which is this iron line uh he's one directional right so this entire line from this point right here from this signal all the way all the way through here all the way into uh well essentially it's essentially all the way back into here on this smelter is the stacker. And you may initially, your initial thought may be, well, exterm, you know, what the hell, you're not supposed to be stacking trains on a line, like on a main line. But that's the thing is it's, this is why these dedicated single directional lines are so good for this because they just, they, they, they just stack behind each other. I mean, like, you know, especially since this line splits off, Right, since he split, uh, since he only goes to this thing, um, is it's it's not going to be a problem because I mean you could stack ten trains back here, and I mean this is a stacker that's not going to interfere with any other lines. One potential issue I see is if a train comes here and waits for this one, um, he may uh, it's going to potentially hurt throughput for that guy. Uh, we'll have to see about that. May have to do a little bit of fiddling. Like I said, it's not all perfect yet. Um, but uh but yes yeah, so that's what that is this is just an example we set up for some signaling for circuits which we are going to head up and do now and uh i've gathered as many materials as i can my inventory is full as normal and circuits i've ghosted here because i centered them the best i could due to how rails are two spaces it's it's one <laughs> it's one tile not centered you'd never know probably unless i told you or you're hyper observant um so this is about centered now this is not obviously a huge space between here but it doesn't have to be i made it so the port so the networks don't connect that is one thing that i did do is so that these networks do not connect um, but other than that i mean none of this interferes with any of this the copper comes around but again the copper line is actually uh right over here if you see on the mini map um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on my bots and we're going to try to build this beast so this is our circuit build and uh i mentioned last episode that it took a very long time to headache out all the circuit stuff um actually surprisingly most of it was not the build the build is actually pretty simple uh well i say that there's a lot of nuances with it but it didn't take super long to design the build most of the headaching was the rails and routing of stuff and you'll see why um shortly <laughs> uh but anyway it's pretty standard we had two rows uh, same concept as these smelters, it is, uh, kind of, well, I had the word in my head and now I completely forgot it. Um, tapered? That's the word, tapered. It's, uh, like, tapered down in the second row for bot travel. Uh, but yeah, so this produces 31,000 circuits, give or take 100 or so, each minute. Uh, there's no bot charging issues. It uses, I think? like 600 bots maybe 650 with bot speed seven i believe this is not my helicopter is it or is that mine is this mine <laughs> i actually have no idea um i know i brought more stuff than this i had i had a ton of like 
beacons and stuff in my other one. Um, but yeah, so not super heavy on the bots and as well, one thing that's actually quite interesting, right, is as we advance in the game, although the builds will be huge, right, as we advance through science, our performance will actually get better because the higher bot speed you have, um, the less bots you need to actually do a task. Um, so as we get higher bot speeds, all of our builds are going to be actually more efficient. This is the helicopter I was looking for. Uh, so that's that's a good thing, right? As we get going here, and we're making good progress. I mean, seriously, in the last two episodes, and plus the stream, but we got this done. Circuits will be pretty easy-ish. <laughs> if I can keep straight what the hell needs to happen with these lines, and you'll see here in a minute why this is so convoluted. Um, these lines are gonna be crazy, I'll tell you that much. Um, I'm out of ports. I knew I'd be out of that. Um, what else are we missing? Inserters. This uses a ton of inserters. Jeez. Well, we're gonna have to go make another supply run, apparently. Uh, let's dump some of these beacons. Let's dump. Let's put some of those in there. And, uh... Are we still missing inserters here? No, we're missing 23 roboports, a, quite a few modules, some power poles. Seriously? It always is deceiving to me how many power poles these damn things use. I think we did get all the beacons, though. And assemblers. And have the wooden boxes. Okay, let, let's go. Uh, let's go grab some materials here. So let's dump some of that in there. Some of those. And uh, now the circuit builds is we're actually going to build them in pairs. So the next one after this, recall that we do need seven. The next one after this is going to. Uh, well, there's modules. I do need those. The next one after one we built does need to be far enough away so the uh, networks don't connect. But other than that, it can be as close as we can get it. Um, however, how many? I don't remember how much of stuff we needed. 200 and something? Well, we might as well just bring a ton of them, right? Um, anyway. Uh, the one after that can be that distance I mentioned before, but then after that, um, the third one actually needs to be at least a 363, probably more like a 3103 just for the extra space. We're not using 3103s but for this, but it needs to be a very minimum of a 363 space um, between so that iron trains can stack there um, or wait there without blocking the previous thing. Kind of the same concept as I explained uh, before with the uh, with the uh, gear and iron lines to the assemblers and drills. So I'm sorry if I'm like confusing you. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> this is what I mean. This is why it took days to headache this stuff. It's really, really complicated. Um, and, I mean, if you say it's not complicated, then you are nuts, or you don't understand it. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty harsh, but seriously, what, this is uh, this is quite uh, quite confusing, uh, the way we're doing it. However, I think that it... Oh, crap. I don't know what you're trying to bring me, guys, but I certainly don't need that much rail right now. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, it's... <laughs> It's gonna pay off, I think. I hope. I hope it's gonna pay off. I mean, really. Ah, oh, jeez. Come on, game. Why do I have all this crap? Um, the thing is, like, I actually need most of this stuff. I don't need furnaces right now, and I don't need pumps. I do need these wooden boxes, because that's what we're using. I don't need that. I use the belt to measure, but... I'm going to be using train links from this point on. I do not need these bots. Go away. Uh, I will need to up my inserter count, though. This will kick to make everything into gear here. Um, but yeah, so I think it will pay off the way we're doing this, to be honest. I really do. Uh, I think... Jeez, man. Like I said, I mean, I need, like, all this stuff. I need a bigger inventory is what I need. Well, this can actually go away. That was a measuring stick. Um... Is that all we were missing? Pretty sure that's all we were missing. Uh, but yeah, so once we, and this is the hardest part, right? We've actually, I mean, this is why I'm so excited, guys. We have crossed the hump, essentially. The smelters were the hardest thing in terms of actually, like, placing them and stuff. Circuits are next hardest in terms of logistical challenges for the rails. I mean, the rails for the smelters are confusing, but they were already figured out pretty much before I stamped it. By the way, while we're down here, let me uh, very quickly show you something, because someone had a question last episode about this. 
Uh, and it, it's a it's a good question. So they asked about this stacker. Um, they said, if we turn off this station in the stacker, once there's three trains here, won't the train just pull forward into the uh, switcheroo when it's not supposed to? And uh, it won't because it actually has signals wired right here, right? So he's going to pull through, but he's going to stop at these signals if there's something in the way. Um, and worst case, if he pulls through here, um, I mean, I know this is all closely signaled for throughput, but he comes through here, which that alone can hold like three trains, uh, and then they stop here, right? So it's not like he's going to pull like into here and then stop and then block the whole thing. They wait here until they actually have a switcheroo they can fit into, uh, you, know, you know, and then once this backs up, even if the station uh, turns off, you know, due to signaling, they won't pull through and have it crash or anything. So it'll... Um, it'll be fine, and, uh, anyhow, so that's just a quick thing there, and, and yeah, like I was saying, after we get these circuits worked out, now, this does include red and blues, because that's also part of the confusing part with this, um, however, once we get that worked out, we are actually on the home stretch, even though there's quite a few bills to work out from then, they will be so much simpler than these, and, uh, just logistically so much easier. So we are actually on the home stretch here, guys. I know this has been long. This is episode 74, I think. Um, but we are, I mean, we are making progress. I am very, very happy with the progress we're making. So I feel like I definitely needed more than 250 speeds. Uh, this thing. <laughs> I'm glad I grabbed more than that because I think this thing was uh, tricking me. This actually needs a ton of modules. Uh, now, I'm not going to build seven of these, because I don't think I have the modules for seven of these at the moment, and we need, like, red and greens to make modules, so I need to feed these into reds and then into blues. <laughs> we need at least a couple of these, because we do need several for a red or blue build to even work. So if we build another set, what I was saying, right, is... Really? I feel like this is something that probably should not be done from the helicopter because there's no way in hell I can fly that in a straight line. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit here. I do really like this mod, this zoom mod. Okay, so if we come up here, this is gonna be huge. Um, like I said, this one only needs to be the distance uh, apart to not have the things connect. So this one can be this, this close, and we're good to go for that. Uh, now I am probably going to be missing a lot of stuff, uh, but yeah, so, oh, I didn't grab my, did I grab the wooden, yeah, I did grab the wooden box, okay, so that's how far this needs to be, and then between this one, the top of this one, and the one after it, so essentially the last one in a pair and the first one in the next pair needs to be a 363 spacing apart, uh, so what we'll do, and then also these need to be between the output here. Um, this needs to be a minimum, again, probably more like a 310 3 just for the extra buffer space. Um, an absolute minimum of a 363 train space between this output and the closest iron line. And that's, again, so a full train can fit in between there without sitting on top of the iron lines. Um, which, I mean, we have plenty of room. I mean, these can actually come, like, all the way up into here and turn. Uh, which is pretty good, and then that leaves all this room up here for the circuits, other circuits. We'll finish landfilling this lake, and, uh, and yeah, so that's how that's going to go. The reds and blues are going to go in here somewhere. We are actually going to make plastic locally at the reds um, for train uh, throughput reasons, because transporting some coal and... Uh, petroleum barrels is less trains or less train trips than transporting plastic trains, right? Because, I mean, a plastic train can hold whatever X amount of plastic, but then a barrel train can hold a ton of petroleum, like way more plastic worth than, you know, a plastic train can actually hold. If that logic makes sense, so that's kind of the plan there. We probably don't have, do we actually, did we actually have enough inserters to finish this? I will be quite amazed. Looks like we don't have enough ports. <laughs> these are so many robo ports, these builds. I mean, the robo ports are gonna be outrageous on our power graft. Like, I don't even know how many I have already. A lot. I mean, if we look here, like, this thing alone has 500 robo ports, essentially. 
And that's the copper one, even. That's a smaller one. I'm not even sure if we have the bigger one anymore. Uh, that looks like a bigger one. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> These guys got lost. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is not going to be enough modules, but it'll be a bit to get it started. Again, we won't be able to fully turn on the reds or blues, probably due to a lack of modules. I think we have everything else we need for them, or the make everything can make them, but... Uh, so what we need to... What I'm going to do now is if I have some track... I'm going to do a measurement here. So let's hop out for a second. Uh, so first off, and again, copper's coming in from the other direction. Keep that in mind. That's why this station's the different direction. Um, so the advantage to this, right, is that copper never crosses iron because it comes in the other way. And the only thing that crosses iron is circuits, which isn't actually going to be moving that much. And... Uh, what we may do is on some of these we will create stoplight systems like uh, was done on the 015 map uh, to kind of help things. We'll see if we need them or not. Uh, but again, it's to minimize crossings. There's no way with this many builds, right? There's like no way to avoid crossings uh, that I can possibly think of. So we're going to have something cross. And I would rather have circuits cross the iron than to have iron and copper cross each other. Because uh, circuits are going to be a bit lower throughput than that. Uh, so, if we mark, actually, just, uh, slightly confused, <laughs> a little bit confused, um, actually I'm very confused, why is, uh, okay, hold on, <laughs> see he comes through here, um, I'm trying to, I really wish this, like, thing where it shows how many uh, you know, the little white squares for, like, wagons. I wish there was some way, like, an option or something to extend that, because I'd like to have it extend out, like, actually this far. Um, okay, so this is here. Another train could wait not quite in his butt, um, because this one obviously needs to pull out. This is not a row-row system. Um, so let's just bring him out here. Extra space is not a bad thing in this case. So let's just, uh, let's actually, let, let's be safe here. Um, I mean, that's a circuit train, I think. Yeah, it's a circuit train, but that's fine. Um, so let's just do that. Because this is actually going to be... I'm actually not sure how <laughs> how this is going to work. How, how is this going to work? Uh, because he goes... Do we actually have room for this? I don't even know if our tracks work for this, to be honest. I may have discovered an issue. Like I said, everything is not completely thought out yet, hence why I'm not sharing any of these builds yet, because there are certainly still flaws with them, because this actually needs an input and output lane, and if you do that, it's going to interfere with the iron one, which, I mean, the only way for this to work is if this whole thing, like, drops down. So, like, if he comes over here, right, and then, I mean, this can't even merge into that. So this would actually need to be, like, down two spaces or something. That's actually one space. That needs to be, like, down here and then curve up or something like that. And then this needs to be... Yeah, because this one... This one comes out, right? And he needs... Oh, no, 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 no. He could take the space above the copper, you idiot. <laughs> wow. Okay, I must be... This is what I mean. It gets, confu it gets confusing, all right? It really does. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so he comes in. This guy does that. And you... The problem with one spacing... All of our iron lines are one space, but you can't actually go really easily from one space to one space. Like, I mean, it, see, it doesn't work. So... What needs to happen is this actually needs to go to space here. And what we need to do is just make sure he can merge. So this could come forward a little bit. We do want this fairly tight here. Um, just to make sure he's not on the turn. So that's pretty close-ish. I mean, a train could come up right to here. And, or here, I mean, whatever way. Uh, up to here and wait. 
And actually, if we want this right-hand drive, the other train would actually come in from here and he would leave this away, which is fine. I mean, the point is a train can come here and wait, and as soon as he leaves, boom, a train can zip right in. So that's kind of how that, that one would work. Let's just, let's just use this spacing. Like I said, more space is not bad. Uh, so we're just going to extend this out so we can measure a train the size that we need it. Um, so let's just, let's just do it from here to be safe, right? Let's just do that. Uh, that's on that direction out. And actually, we should be measuring the size of the other one. You all, I, like, I, like I just said, you always you want to over measure, right? If you over measure, it's fine. Space is, a, is something I can give up. Having it too close and having to redesign the whole damn thing or tear it all up is something that I do not want. So we're actually going to measure off this one because this one actually, uh, since it's a curve, right? It's not actually from this face. It's actually from like here. So that's actually what we're going to measure off of. And again, it will be a bit long, but that's fine. Um, so then this guy, so that's one, two, three, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then three more. One, two, three. So then theoretically, our first iron line, oh, screw you. Um, first iron line could come up right about here-ish. And we would be good. And it's literally just gonna cross like that. And then uh, these are, since these are, you know, the same distance away. Uh, so this does leave, you know, this leaves room a little extra. I placed this signal, I think one farther back than it actually needs to be. Oh no, that's actually where it needs to be. This is, um, this could move up one more maybe. Yeah, so that's a little bit of extra room. Uh, it should be fine. Although I do wanna make sure, I've, let's just, let's, like I said, <laughs> rather take up a little extra space than to have to tear up the whole thing. So we'll leave a little bit of extra room in here just so we can make sure we have room to signal this on the side and stuff. So essentially this is as close as our closest iron line can run. All right. And our closest iron line is going to be um, this one here. So we could actually connect that potentially here. It's going to be, you know, all these are one space, so that went one too far. So, and he's just going to zip on through here. Actually, somewhere I have a uh, blueprint of this. Oh, there goes all my rail. <laughs> it is actually crazy how much rail you use for this. Like, I underestimate it every time, and each time I keep requesting more. And, and I keep underestimating how much I need. All right, so this is the input, or no, that's the output for that. So, is that right? Something seems wrong here. Why would that be that way? Something seems not correct in here. Um, so this is an input. Does that mean the input? Well, wait, hold up. See, this is really, really confusing. Okay, so he comes through curve. I already lost what curve I'm on. Crap. Okay, this one curve down. Okay, so he inputs. Well, this should, yeah, okay. So this actually means our input's gonna cross our output but no matter how you do it, they're gonna cross. Because if you have your input there, then your output's gonna cross your input either way. Right? I think. <laughs> I mean, this is right-hand drive. I don't know. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is a bit confusing. Okay, so. Did I have more rail potentially in my helicopter? Yeah, because, uh, geez. I don't know, man. That's the thing though. These are actually dedicated lines, right? So this one doesn't even come up here. Now you may be thinking like, 
well, extreme, then couldn't you have moved this farther out because the next line is going to be over? Um, but you do have to recall that, well, one, I'm not going to be offsetting these each time because that would look horrible. Um, and then also, uh, this spacing I just did is exactly the same as this one. Uh, this would not curve down. I'm dumb. This would curve up <laughs> like, like the one above it. Um, so, anyways, uh, the spacing here is exactly the same because... It, um, because they're placed the same way. So if he comes out this way, let me just, so that's a curve. Here's a first straight piece. I always do this to kind of measure and make sure that they are in fact, okay, they are the same. So yeah, the spacing is still good on that. Uh, so we run him this way. He's going to cross over. And then let's throw a signal in here really quick. So that's right hand drive that I don't really know where these need to be in terms of that. We do want actually, and this is why actually this, so he sticks out to like back here. This, yeah. Cause what we want is this is why we measured off the top because we also want an output train, right? Cause an output train might have to wait for an iron train to go, right? So an output train might wait in here. Um, so by measuring off the shorter lane, um, it definitely guarantees that the train can fit in here as well. Uh, so with that in mind, this one is actually, again, does not go there because you're dumb. <laughs> okay, so this is an output line, I think. Keeping these straight will take a little bit of practice. He's an output he's an input okay so this comes up and this one actually would curve in now this is where we need to turn it to a two uh, so that's circuits this actually the same concept could be applied here and theoretically the spacing should be the same as the top one I think Hopefully, because um, this is our input. Ah, shoot. Because now this reverses it, right? Now this is like left-hand drive. Man, dude, this is so confusing. Well, this this has to be this way. Uh, because, I mean, this is an output. If I connect this one, if I make... Well, no, 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 no. Yeah. Hold up. Yeah, if I make this one the output, it would be crossing the input, right? Because the input would come up. Or wait, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'm just confusing myself and you guys. This is, again, this is why I don't record some of this. Like, I think maybe now you understand. Because this is what it's like, all right? I mean, this is... And for the record, I'm not feeling like out of it or tired. I'm actually feeling very alert right now. I just, I mean, this is, whew. Okay, so, jeez, this is that. This is that input on the right. It's still right hand drive. Jeez, okay, <laughs> we got that. Now this, because uh, you can turn a, a one space into a two spacing on a curve. Now uh, the curve is a little bit weird but you can do it so like that's what our curve looks like um it actually looks awful is there a way to clean this up i don't think so there's got to be a way to make this clean <laughs> it looks so bad uh okay like that maybe uh nope okay well then that's what we get. Looks kind of bad, but that's what we get. All right, so there you go. So that's how that would work. These guys would leave, and then the next iron line, again, then this would be another output, and this would be another input. Oh, would come up here, and so again, that spacing I did was actually a little bit more than it needed to be because I based it off this line, which isn't doesn't even continue up. Um, but again, 
extra space is not bad here, okay? I can afford the extra space. What I cannot afford is building, rebuilding the whole thing. Um, so, I mean, you do, I mean, it may look like, because actually we need even more, some of these lines are going to come up here. So these lines are going to come out to like here. And, it's, and you're probably thinking, well, there's no room for other builds. But when you look at the size of these builds, they're not actually that big. And this whole thing is going to be gone anyways. Um, so like, I mean, we have room. And moving this a couple tiles, like four tiles to the left or whatever, isn't going to make that big of a difference in terms of overall space. Um, and I'd rather have that extra space for the trains. So that's how that's going to work, guys. I'm going to end this episode here. Uh, that's how the circuit's going to look. I'm going to fill, I'm going to build out some rails. I think I'm going to keep it at two for now because, uh, again, we do need to make sure we have the modules to uh, module a red circuit build and a blue circuit build, which we can then feed into the make everything to make some more modules. Um, so like one of these or like half of these, I'm going to send to the make everything and then the rest I'm going to send to blues and reds. I'll, I'll have to check. I'm not actually sure how many modules we have left. We may have more than I think. I mean, we, yeah, actually we do. We have a lot. We have uh, that's three, that's four, five, five point six. We have almost six thousand prods, and then we have um, four, five point eight uh, speeds. So we may actually have enough to do a couple more. I don't think all seven and the reds and blues, but probably a couple more so we can feed things a bit more properly. But uh, anyway, that's the plan, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, we're making very good progress. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, as always, down in the comments about this stuff. And uh, if you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.